aberrant case of racism against the son of a well-known baseball player in the Dominican Republic. Actor George Briner Bell discriminated against in a very famous restaurant in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. The restaurant known as Habanero SDQ shine bright for its contentious and elitist tendencies, disgusting racist inclinations well known by the locals in the area. This time, the receiving end of these remarks was George Briner Bell, actor and son of Jorge Antonio Bell, better known as George Bell, Dominican former left fielder and American League MVP in Major League Baseball, who played 12 seasons in the Toronto Blue Jays, Chicago Cubs, and Chicago White Sox. That, in a country like the Dominican Republic, with the majority of its population being mulatto, Complaints are being filed for alleged discrimination based on skin color in commercial establishment is something that should call for concern. The actor, athlete, and son of former baseball player denounced that he experienced this unpleasant moment in a restaurant in the capital city. According to his publications, since he stepped foot in the restaurant, he was received with a contentious look from one of the bouncers, followed by we are full, he said in the complaint. He added that then a group of 10 to 12 people arrived, whom he did let in without inconvenience. He assured that the difference between him and those who did manage to access the place was the color of their skin. According to his words, they were white, Dominican, of European faction, and he was dark skinned. This, as expected, made him question the bouncer about the reason why he wasn't allowed to enter the restaurant. It's because of my skin color, right? He asked. And the answer received from the bouncer left no reason for doubt. Yes, and you're ugly, he says he answered. The truth is that I usually don't make this type of publications but we must put a stop to this type of recurring behavior in these type of places in our nation. He shared on his social media. Apparently, this hasn't been the only time that the restaurant staff acted in this way. The young man's complaint generated numerous reactions from people who assured that they were treated in the same way. Apologies from the restaurant after these situations was made public. The restaurant issued a statement apologizing for the situation and noted that he has tried that he has tried to contact the actor to be able to address the situation appropriately. It also noted that they have taken action against the staff who acted in this way and assured that it's not a company's policy. The restaurant indicated that it's working diligently to resolve any issues that may have risen and that we have made changes to our staff and implemented measures to improve our processes and prevent situations like this from happening again in the future. What do I have to say about this? Wow. Like, wow. Wow, are you being serious? In a country like the Dominican Republic, where everywhere you look, you see black, what are we doing? And what are we supporting these establishments? I'm sorry, but this apology came to light this time because the gentleman on the receiving end of this attack was a person in the public eye. But if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't have an idea about this. And this particular staff member that acted this way, he was allowed and he has no repercussions in the past. Let's keep that real. And why the governmental institutions don't have remarkable consequences for establishments that behave in such a derogatory way? By not closing the doors of these establishments, we are enabling nonsense and the recurrent attack to our people. Listen, but before I end this report, I would like to share some valuable facts. 
although according to the to the theo theoretical concept according to a theoretical concept 82 percent of the of the population over the age of 15 residing in the dominican republic is afro descendant but only 6.6 percent recognize themselves as such and this was revealed by the enogar 2021 survey which also indicates that 47.9 consider themselves mestizo or indian and 27.5 as mulatto or brown. Listen, each to their own with their journey of self-love and acceptance. But me, the Colombian Tutti, the daughter of a native indigenous woman and a black man, when I look at the mirror, I see my nose, I see my lips, and when I see my the hyperpigmentation of my knuckles, the shape of my body, the feistiness and fearless of my character, I see a black woman. I see a proud black woman. So to whoever is watching and is ashamed of the little or lots of black in you, just remember you have a little or lot of beauty, of strength, of glorious and invincible power that is being passed to you by the timeless warriors that while in change will never give up until they sold themselves free. We must free ourselves from preconceived conditions idea of the stereotypical European standards of beauty. We are unique, strong, gorgeous, and black. Don't ever forget that. My name is Tutti Baron. And you can find me here in this platform at Tell Off with Tutti on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Tell Off with Tutti. Thank you for watching. This is not an easy journey. But thank you for watching. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of self-love and self-worth to do. See you next time.